Your boy got up at 4 a.m. to make this video, so thank God for MTash Mango Splash. Links are down below in the comment section as well as the description. Advanced.gg slash MTashed. Use code MTashed for 10% off at checkout. Hey, what's going on guys? MTash here, and today we're going to be talking about all the new things coming in Inazuma. It is official. The next patch is going to be 2.0. It's not 1.7. It is 2.0. The new region, all the different characters, all the quests, all the chests, everything you need to know about Inazuma. Now, they did like an hour-long live stream, and I'm going to be doing a recap of everything. Honestly, like 55 minutes out of the hour. Uh, it was all talking about the lore, how they came up with their design decisions, but they did reveal a lot of different things. You can see there, there's a bunch of characters, so there's definitely things to talk about, but... Uh, it does seem that we're going to have to experience a lot of this stuff on our own. It is not being, uh, you know, fed to us. We don't know anything about any of the uh, new systems like the Sakura tree that's been leaked in the past. Uh, we don't know really anything other than the events for the most part. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because everyone wants to experience all the chests and quests for themselves. It does seem that there's going to be a lot of hidden stuff here. There's some verticality to the map. There's obviously some puzzles. You can see them, uh, you know, during this reveal. There's new enemies and different things. So let's get started. Number one, Electro. Very important. It is literally surrounding everything in this region. There's a ton of Electro puzzles. But one of the design decisions that they uh, talked about is making sure that you can do a lot of these puzzles regardless of characters owned or the elements that you have. And so some of them, while they might be Electro-based, you might not necessarily need an Electro character. And even if you do, the main character is now going to be Electro, which is really, really cool. There's a lot of new areas that have honestly very different designs as well. There are beautiful blossom trees. There's electro areas. There's like more samurai looking areas. There's millilith looking areas. It, it honestly seems like this area has some depth and there's a ton of different islands. And then let's talk about the characters. We've got Ayaka. We all know Ayaka has been revealed since like the very start, but she's actually going to be the first banner. They didn't talk about any of the other units that are available, but Ayaka will be the first banner when this drops. So if you've been waiting since the launch of the game, like many others, Ayaka is finally going to come home. As long as you have Primo gems and didn't waste them on stupid characters like Albedo, right? <laughs> right? Right? Now, they also showed off Yomiya. Uh, I mean, everyone knows about these characters already, but she is going to be on the second banner with uh, Sayu, the, the little animal... What is she, a ball? Like, uh, is she a human? Is she a ball? Is she, a, is she technically a tanuki? I don't know. But anyways, we've got a fire archer, and honestly, she does look really cool. Uh, if you've been interested in getting a new pyro DPS, I personally am more interested in this little fire archer than any of the other characters. I don't know if I'd actually wish on this banner just yet, but if you do wish on this banner, you also have an opportunity to get the new four star. So, I mean, that's a pretty pog opportunity, right? Now, the other thing you can be really happy about is the Electro Traveler. I mean, I, I don't know if I could say officially because it's leaked technically, but the Electro main character has an amazing kit. It's going to synergize very well with some of the new, uh, you know, artifacts that are available and is honestly going to be an S tier character, in my opinion, if you're looking for someone that's Electro. Is it the most meta element? Maybe not, but everything that I've seen points to the main character being absolutely Pog Champion. So... That's exciting. Now you can see here a lot of moving parts, a lot of story. It seems like it's going to have a little bit of a deeper or darker story. Uh, you know, there's some war going on. I think that overall, this is going to be a banger. So if you're interested in the story type content, Inazuma is not going to disappoint. <laughs> if you're interested in Endgame, that might be a different story. But, you know, this story does look really cool. Great cutscenes overall. I am definitely very excited. Now, if you want to get some Primo Gems and you missed it, there is a code about to appear on screen, and this is for you. Make sure to enter that as soon as you can, because these codes do expire after, like, a day. So make sure you enter that right now, and let's move on. Now, if you're interested in chests, quests, and exploring, it does seem that there's going to be a ton of different puzzles and collectibles to get, so that's going to be pretty sweet overall. And honestly, the region does look like it's pretty sprawling. There is a lot of water, but if you just look through all the footage from the live stream, there are a lot of areas, and they all look different. And so, you know, even though it does seem like, you know, maybe it's the Golden Apple Archipelago 2.0, I think that there's way more landmass here, and also 
uh, you know, I said before, verticality to a lot of this content. Uh, there are some mountains to climb. There are some dungeons to go in or, or, or caves, if you want to call it that. And so that does uh, appeal to the adventure side of me. Also, this is the part where they were talking about puzzles not being reliant on the characters that you own. So I think a lot of them are going to be electro-based. Also, a really cool little movement mechanic here. This is, I don't know, it just looks pretty sweet. I wanted to show you it. Now let's talk about the juicy stuff, the amazing end game changes that are going to keep you grinding this game day in, day out, going forward. Actually, it's just a bunch of events, some of them repeats of the ones we've done. There is a free Beto that everyone can get as well as some crowns, so if you're interested in getting Beto or some constellations, you're going to be able to achieve that. They're bringing back the Theater Mechanicus, which is essentially tower defense. That's going to be in Liyue. Uh, you can see it right there. Uh, the Lost Riches, if you're interested in getting a pet. Pretty boring activity overall, but you can get a pet. And then some Leyline Overflow, and then Phantom Flow, which is just fighting enemies. They added an end game to the Serena Teapot, allowing you to now do some gardening. So if you've ever wanted to sit planting seeds and waiting hours upon end for them to grow. Don't you worry, they've added a seed dispensary that you can use and play Farmville in your teapot. Thank goodness for that because I was getting really sick of doing the Spiral Abyss and fighting bosses. Now, if it wasn't clear before, Ayaka's banner will be first, but they didn't reveal all of the different characters on it, and Yomiya will be after that with Sayu. Now, this is an exciting thing. There are new craftable weapons. They specifically said that these are craftable weapons. You can find the information online if you want to find all the leaks and see what they do, but I'm just going to give you a little hint. Lots of energy recharge and support abilities. Now, there are some new 5-star gotcha weapons, and uh, some people are rejoicing over this. I'm going to talk about this. They are actually adding a new type of pity system for the weapon banner. If you're wishing on a weapon banner and you don't get the weapon that you want, you're going to get some um, progress towards getting a guarantee on the weapon that you do want. I mean, that's cool and all, but you could still spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars getting the wrong weapon before you get the right weapon. It's cool and all, they're adding some pity in, but like, wow, you went from $2,000 to get your Staff of Homa to 1000 That isn't necessarily good. It's better, but not good. But these are the crown jewels, in my opinion. Now, these artifacts are honestly probably my favorite thing here because I think that they're going to be game changers. If you look at the uh, top one there, you're getting energy recharge, but you're also increasing elemental burst damage by 25% of energy recharge. This is something that would work amazing on Mona, who's going to get hydro damage based on energy recharge as well. So stacking it would give you hydro damage. It's going to give you energy recharge. It's going to give you more damage on the burst. That is insanity. You could use it on Zhang Li. You could use it on Xing Chou. You could use this on anyone, and it's going to bring a lot of value. But here is the big kicker. Imagine using this bad boy on Venti if you're also using another animal character. You could have Venti spamming his ability, sucking everyone up, doing extra damage, while maybe your other animal character is doing the Verdescent set and debuffing. The potential here is endless. Now, the next one is really interesting. The two-piece set is pretty basic. It's like the Gladiator set giving you attack. That one is not amazing. I'm not really interested. But the four-piece has some major potential. When casting an elemental skill, if the character has 15 or more energy, you lose energy, but then your normal attack, your charge attack, and your plunging attack, that damage gets a 50% modifier on it. That is going to be one of the biggest damage boosts in the game. That is a pure DPS boost. Now, by using the four-piece set, you are giving up being able to spam your ultimate in some cases. However, that being said, if the leaks are true, the Electro main character, really, really good for energy regeneration and getting energy for your team. You throw in maybe official. All of a sudden, you're generating a ton of particles for your team. There are going to be setups where you're spamming abilities, you're generating a ton of energy, and you might be able to just have a 50% boost to your overall damage, one of the biggest multipliers in the game, with very little downside and very little downtime. I am overall excited for this, but I'm not going to hype it up um, 
like crazy. It is honestly looking like a, a six or seven out of 10 patch for me. Uh, I love the story. I do love the story. Um, I'm excited to do the chests and quests. My worry is after I do the chests and quests, it's going to be kind of like a dragon spawn where I'm not really doing anything uh, on the map. And my issue with that, my worry with that is it's not replayable. When I do those chests and quests, they're gone. There isn't any more content there. And that's a little bit frustrating and scary that in 2.0, we don't have any sort of spiral abyss or boss rush mode or anything other than these chests and quests. And so uh, I think it's going to be an amazing experience. I think the first month of this 2.0, everyone is going to be absolutely incredibly happy. But what about, what about a month after that? Are people going to get salty? Are people going to get bored after a month? Or is it going to be two weeks? I really don't know because the region does look dense. It does look deep. It looks big. But uh, who knows? Maybe this is laying the groundwork and they can add some new systems later. But I feel like Genshin Impact doesn't need a thousand new characters and chests to find. They need some replayable content. Something that you can grind at week after week and play it. It doesn't have to be hard necessarily, but just something you can sink your teeth into, use your characters, fight some bosses, and not just be mini games week after week while you're waiting for your primo gems. Do you know what I mean? I think that overall, this is going to be a great experience for the mass majority of Genshin Impact players. I think the mass majority of people are going to be happy. And me speaking like this probably upsets some people. I know that a lot of people are excited. There's an Ayaka banner, there's a Yamiya and Sayu and all these different things coming, but I can't help but be a little bit worried about the overall future of the game. It's not going to die. It's an extremely popular game. It's just getting boring. And I didn't see anything here where I'm like, yeah, baby! There still isn't anywhere for me to use my level 90 characters with maxed out crown talents that is challenging. And I know that some people are like, well, what about the Vagabond boss event? Sure, if there was rewards for getting the max score on every floor, I would have done it. I would have went after it. I would have battled. I would have used food buffs. But there wasn't. There wasn't. And so if you look at the amount of points you needed to get the maximum around, um, you know, amount of rewards, it was still easy. I was one banging those bosses using two characters. Like, it, it, there just isn't anything here that's that challenging and unfortunately i am very interested in content like that and i don't know if it's ever going to happen with this game i think we're going to have a blast with inazuma i just think that we're going to have a blast with inazuma for a short period of time much like a dragon spine or the golden apple archipelago but that's pretty much it for me i don't think i missed anything too too much hopefully you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys very soon thanks again Bye bye